Hello everyone, Farron Dexkin, and yesterday, last night, I beat Final Fantasy 16 for the first time, and I am still just in disbelief of the game that I played, and the only thing that keeps coming to my mind when I think back on it is just, wow, and I mean, wow, I cannot believe that I got to play this game. And so today, I'm going to be sharing my thoughts with you and giving you my review of Final Fantasy 16. These are just my thoughts and opinions, so if you disagree, that's totally fine. Let's begin. Final Fantasy 16 is the newest entry in the long-running franchise. With that comes a new cast of characters, new villain, a new world, and this time around, instead of a summoning summons, characters change into the summons and become them. Um, as I played this, I kept thinking back to watching Digimon Frontier, um, as that was a change-up for that franchise, where instead of having partner Digimon, actually just became the Digimon, so it's a very similar concept here. It's one I really enjoy. And with that, we get a really new, um, refreshing and deep battle system that is new to this franchise. And it's one that I really fell in love with and cannot stop thinking about. Final Fantasy 16 introduces the series into a action JRPG hack and slash style combat that we've never really seen in the series. And while Final Fantasy XV also had kind of action real-time combat, it was not on this level. The combat in this game is one of the best I've ever experienced. It starts out being kind of like a button mashy, do the same combo type of system. But as you continue through the game and gain more abilities, it flourishes into a deep and complex battle system. It gives you a host of options and it's a system that builds and keeps you engaged with every encounter that you come across. You gain different abilities through what is essentially this game's skill tree, but in this case we can call it the skill circle. You're gaining different powers from the icons. Each icon power functions differently from one another. Keep them feeling fresh and not feel like they're direct copies of each other. I will only go over the early icon abilities so as not to spoil anything from the later game. The Phoenix Icon form is like your all-arounder form. It has a unique dash ability called Phoenix Shift that allows you to close in on distant enemies while having abilities that deal a decent amount of damage and are easy to use. The Garuda form functions as kind of your quick attack and evade form. Its unique ability allows you to pull enemies to you, but this only works in smaller enemies. When you're fighting larger enemies, when you use the skill on them, it will pull you into the air with a quick attack, but on some enemies, when you use this ability, they are pulled to the ground and that kind of continues their staggered state for allowing you to do extra damage. Next up, we have the Ramu form. This form, I would say its best utility is getting down stagger gauge as fast as possible. You still do decent damage with this form, but when you use abilities like the Lightning Rod, where you summon a lightning orb and every time you hit it or an enemy hits it, it sends out an AOE of, ele of electricity. Depending on what skills you combine with this, you can really deplete a stagger gauge almost instantly and in some cases take on entire mobs of enemies. This form's unique ability allows you to place targets on a single enemy or multiple enemies, and you will send out small electric orbs that latch onto the enemies, and when you go and attack them, these electric orbs will pop on the enemies, and thus causing more damage, and depending if they have a stagger gauge, helping you to deplete it even faster. This is one of my favorites in the game, and I've had it equipped ever since I got it. And as you use these abilities, and the ones you get as you progress through this game, you will find what different icon forms work better with other ones, which abilities play off one another. You can also utilize Torgal, your wolf companion, as part of your arsenal. You're able to designate commands to him. Uh, you have two options that have him attack the enemy in slightly different ways and an option to heal. Believe me when I tell you, this game is beautiful. During my time with this game, I stopped multiple times because I was in such awe of some of the environments it takes you to. You see such a variety of landscapes, cities, towns, 
the art is impeccable. For me personally, I didn't even notice any super odd low res textures that you see in most games. I feel the team did an exceptional job in the visual presentation of this game and they need to be commended for it. Not only is this game a marvel to look at, it also has one of the best cast of characters of any Final Fantasy. From the main characters to the side characters, they all feel important to the world and story. I cared about basically everyone I came across, and by the end, I didn't want to leave any of them. I felt I had grown with them, but they had accepted me into their family and welcomed me with open arms. Five, Jill, Sid, and Torgal are some of the notable standouts of this cast. And speaking of Torgal, welcome to the Torgal Appreciation segment. This is a segment within the video where we're just going to talk about nothing but Torgal. And we're going to appreciate everything about him because he is the bestest boy. So, to begin, Torgal is a good boy. He is the bestest boy. I would die for this fictional wolf. He is my most loyal and trusted companion. And if you do not pay him an absurd amount... Then... You are undeserving of his love and loyalty, and you should feel that. What are you, a dog hater? You are the villain of this game, and you should be punished for your crimes against Toro. I mean, what gives you the audacity? The gall, the pure entitlement that you are but giving Torgo is due. You should just essentially stop playing your game. You don't deserve Toro, so why even continue the journey? Then let me tell you one other thing. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. I got a little off the rails for a second. Um, back to the review. This game tells a gripping story of oppression, slavery, loss, love, and so much more. I was engrossed in the story from beginning to the end and really fell in love with it. It made me angry, sad, happy, and excited. And I do not cry often, but this game had the waterworks going multiple times, and I just have to give props to the Ryan team. They told a beautiful and well-crafted story that fills you with emotion. An effective tool of the story is the side quest that you come across in the game. And I know there's been a lot of criticism towards these side quests, saying that they all amount to just meaningless, remedial tasks. And I just want to say, while those quests do exist, I would argue that the majority have varying degrees of depth that end up enhancing the world and story, as they do get referenced later on the game and other side quests. And it makes you feel like they are a part of the world and they don't just exist outside of the main narrative. It makes you feel like you've affected the world you've helped to make it a better place and the characters appreciate you for what you've done. Now let's talk about the sheer spectacle and scale of this game. It's insane. Even minor bosses feel like an event. And if you thought God of War was the showcase for spectacle and scale for video games, this game takes that and turns it up to 11. These go to 11. While not always the most gameplay intensive, this game has some of the best boss battles I have ever experienced. And each major boss battle seems to just one up the one that came before. It is insane. The things this game does and the things it lets you do, I didn't think were possible in modern gaming. And I still cannot stop thinking about it. I cannot think of another game where I've experienced such climactic battles. It's truly a feat of this game that I will think about probably for years to come. And it's not just in this way that the game amazes. It also features some of the best acting I've ever heard in a video game. Everyone's performances are top notch. And Ben Starr, the actor for Clive, is the starring example of this. No pun intended. His performance literally gave me goosebumps and I could feel the passion and emotion he put into his performance. This man better win multiple awards for his performance in this game because it is seriously that good and all the others. Then why the hell am I still breathing? I applaud this cast for their hard work, and I hope we get to see them in future video games 
because they are so extremely talented. Moving on, I have so many positive things to say about this game. But as with any game, it does have flaws. And there are things I did not personally like. And some of those things being mainly the wasted potential of Benedicta. This character had such a commanding presence and so much potential, but she is underutilized to a jarring degree. I won't say what happens to her, but with a cast that scarcely puts women at the forefront, her treatment is one that does hurt the game. And while Jill is a wonderfully fleshed out character with depth that I love, it isn't something that cancels it out. If you have two primary female characters and you only have one that isn't wasted, then that's 50% and that is still failing. And I hope in future entries, women characters are better utilized and given the respect they deserve. Another aspect is the noticeable lack of characters of color. Yes, there are some that do exist, but just barely. And with the themes of oppression and slavery, it makes their exclusion a deliberate decision rather than an oversight. And I think Blessing from Kind of Funny Games, but the best, that it's understandable why they didn't include them as they were probably afraid of getting it wrong. It's still not an excuse. And their writers are capable of doing people of color justice and have their inclusion be one that is done in a way that is non-offensive and authentic. To give you my final thoughts, this game at the end of the day is a masterpiece, while at the same time has room to grow and be even better. If you've never played a Final Fantasy or are a veteran to the series or just love action games, I highly recommend you play this game. This is a game that will go down as not only one of my favorite Final Fantasy games, but also one of my favorite games of all time. And so, my final score for Final Fantasy 16 is a 9 out of 10. It is a masterpiece of the game. But even so, a masterpiece always has room to grow. And with its treatment of women in its cast, and the lack of diversity, it does have lessons to learn. And these are areas the series needs to do better with in the future. Thank you all for watching. Please let me know what you thought of the game in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. I am working on another video currently. Um, it's going to deal with Kingdom Hearts. So if you're a fan of Kingdom Hearts, please be on the lookout for that one. And if you're wanting more Final Fantasy content, I made a video previously talking about what makes Final Fantasy Final Fantasy, where I ponder and answer the questions of can Final Fantasy 16 be considered a Final Fantasy game? And what is Final Fantasy? And so I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, everyone.